<clears throat> Where'd you get that? I can't remember the last time I saw a real one. <laughs> huh? <sighs> How sweet. When did you get so thoughtful? I have made a decision about a change that I'm going to be recording this in. I am not at all pleased with the final result, the image quality of everything, so I'm going to be changing the way I record it. Unfortunately, the change won't take effect for a few episodes at least, because I already have so much gameplay footage recorded, and I'm not going to go and re-record all of that. So, hmm. at least the next two episodes are going to end up being um, using the old style recording footage. Well now, you must be Cloud. I'm Marl, your landlady. So how'd you like the place? You from up on high? I've been around. I'll bet. No matter. All kinds come through with all kinds of reasons. If you ever need an ear to bend, I'll lend you mine. Can be about anything. Even Tifa. What's she to you? The granddaughter I never had. And if you hurt her, I'll take it out of your hide. You hear me? Loud and clear. Good. Now you'd best get a move on to Seventh Heaven. She's got a head start on you and then some. I've chatted with that Barrett guy a few times. Looks like a real hard ass, but he's actually pretty chill. Morning. Hey. Just so you know, Marlene's still asleep. <sighs> Let's get down to business, shall we? Huh? These water filters won't replace themselves. <sighs> Although the next batch probably could, if Jesse put her mind to it. <sighs> Most every home in the area has one. Folks love them because they practically eliminate the rotten egg smell. Honestly, they make us more money than this place. And it's easy money, too. We bring new filters, collect the old ones, and get paid. What? <sighs> Give me a break. I'm not a salesman. I'm a soldier. Which is why no one will refuse to pay. What do you say? <sighs> Please? <sighs> Let's get this over with. Great. And while we're at it, I'll give you the grand tour. This is pretty significant, uh, pretty significantly different from the original game. In the original game, Barrett begrudgingly paid Cloud the money he owed him once they got back to the bar. In this, they don't even have the money to pay him, so they have to go sell these water filters in order to get the cash necessary to get him the money they owe him. Go ahead and keep whatever we collect. Seeing as you didn't bring any luggage, I'm guessing there's stuff you need to buy. Thanks. And don't worry. We'll pay you the difference after. Barrett's out making his rounds too. As long as I get it all today. This isn't necessarily a bad idea because it does give an excuse to have Tifa drag Cloud around town in order to introduce the player to the area. Hey there. Here to change out your water filter. Tifa, baby, how you doing? Been waiting for you to... Wait, who's see. Cloud's in charge of collections. He'll take your money. Sounds like a pretty sweet gig. If you ever need someone to fill in, I'm your man. In your dreams, maybe. Huh? Cloud! Uh, since we're here, maybe we should do a little shopping. Suppose I could take a look. Thanks. If you're ever in the market for anything else, drop on by. Especially if Teeth is with you. We'll see you around, okay? And let us know when your filter next needs changing. 
<sighs> What's a girl like Tifa doing running around with a guy like? All the items you can want, straight from the plate. No matter your needs or your budget, our wide selection of items is guaranteed. He's a regular. Stock up here, and he might throw in a freebie or two. For you, maybe. Well, you could try being a little nicer. To get free shit? Not my style. <laughs> Our next stop is Stargazer Heights. Landlady's is a client. Just met her. Then you know what to expect. Remember, she's a good friend of Avalanche, so be nice. Please. Does Tifa seriously not understand the reason why she's so popular? I mean, come on. Buckle up, by the way. This is going to be a long one. Hey, Marl. Got some filters for you. Tifa, my dear, dear girl. Oh, what's he doing here? Working? Be nice. <laughs> Cloud's helping me with collections. You better take care of her. I'm pretty good at taking care of myself, you know. That I do. Still, better him than you. No charm, no wit, big sword, but no skills. I've got skills. Be nice. I'm doing my best. You're looking awfully glum. Are you getting enough sleep? A good long rest to cure anything, I tell you. A tried and true lesson for life on the ground floor, am I right? That you are. Now, your money. Thanks, Marl. You take care of yourself. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. I've actually cut a significant amount of content from this episode in order to keep it on the shorter side, but it's still going to end up being pretty long. Here's another change here, though. Cloud having an apartment in Sector 7 slums. That's different. Morrow's great. She helped get me set up back in the day. You been here a while now? Five years, give or take. But never mind that. We've got to get you your money. Last stop is the weapon store. Before, Cloud didn't really live anywhere. In fact, he slept in the basement of Seventh Heaven. So, I mean, they give you a little bit of a hub here to exist out of. Hey! That last filter didn't do shit! We're so sorry about that. Hopefully this one will work better. Save your excuses and get out! All right. If you could just settle your bill, we'll be on our way. The hell? You charging me for your busted ass goods? My associate handles payment disputes. Think you can mosey up in here and have it your way? Pretty please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Seeing as we're done with our rounds and you've got a small fortune now, why not take a gander at the weapons? Well, when will Barra be back with the rest? <sighs> Before we open up tonight. It'll be a while yet, so... What do you want to do? Don't really know. In that case, I've got a suggestion. Want to hear it? If you're serious about becoming a merc, then you're going to need to start making connections. It's not what you know, but who you know, you know? Hmm. Another lesson for life on the ground floor? Yep. Connections get you jobs. Jobs build your rep. And more rep gets you better connections. How do I start? Hmm. Why not help out the Neighborhood Watch? They're mostly volunteers, but you'll get to know people. Yeah, okay. Didn't see anybody at the office, so let's head up top. Tifa is putting a lot of effort here into trying to keep Cloud around. Now, I don't know if he had made his intentions clear to her whether he was going to stay for a while or what he was going to do with his life, but he seems to be willing to stick around a little bit. He accepted the apartment, and he's willing to go through all of this uh, neighborhood watch stuff to try to build a reputation, because if he wants to live as a mercenary, people are going to need to know who he is. I... I guess. We gotta do something about huh. Didn't know you were holding down the fort. Huh? Oh, hey, Cloud. Um, Looking to join the Neighborhood Watch? That depends. What does this Neighborhood Watch do? Uh, lots of stuff, really. But our top priority is taking care of any beasts that wander into town. 
that and teaching the locals how to defend themselves. Like they say, the only one who will look out for you is you. Cloud's a great fighter, but only we know that. If no one knows him, no one will hire him. Thought if he joined the Watch, he could get his name out there. That would work for everybody. Truth be told, we can really use your help. We can't pay you in Gil, but we'll work something out. For example... Aha! What about your sword? I could mod it for you. No thanks. It's fine just the way it is. What? You some kind of purist? I know I'd never pass up a chance to improve my gear. Come on. At least let me show you how it's done. They have included some sort of a weapons upgrade system in this game. Now, in Final Fantasy um, 13 and 15, they had something like this where you can go and use something, I don't know, to go and upgrade the weapons. Now, you could upgrade your weapons. You could also buy new weapons. And I'm a little hesitant to go and spending a lot of SP, which is the currency in this game, to upgrade the weapon too much. Because, well... This is the first weapon in the game. This is the Buster Sword. The Buster Sword will not be used for terribly long, I imagine. So I don't want to dump all my SP into the bottom tier weapon. Whereas even something that I find in a couple of minutes might be better. All set? Needless to say, you'll have to try it out to appreciate the difference. Thanks. <laughs> we'll do you one better. Spread the word to everyone who'll listen about the new Mercantown. Between him and Wedge, there isn't anyone they don't know. I'll march through the streets singing your praises, even on an empty stomach. So, where are these monsters? Scrap Boulevard. Good hunting. Hey, Cloud, I'll come with. No, I've got this. But you don't know the way, do you? We don't. <laughs> sure thing. I know these streets better than anyone. Tifa has joined the party. Now, Tifa was a character that I was curious about how her character would end up being designed when this game was first announced. Because they showed the design of Cloud and they showed the design of Barrett, but they didn't show Tifa until much more recently. And, well, I had questions on what she would end up looking like because... Well, the design sensibilities in 1997 are different than they are today. In the second half of the 2010s, there was a pretty significant change with the way people view the designs of female characters. And, well, Tifa has kind of an old-school design to her. She has a um, short miniskirt, she's bearing her midriff, and she has large breasts. And now that kind of thing that I don't expect to see in a modern game. I'd have to say that they did carry through the core of her design into this game. They, of course, they had to scale down her chest because she, in the original game, she had watermelons strapped to her chest, and it would look actually quite ridiculous with the more modern 3D technology had they have her looking like that. So I'd have to say that they actually did a pretty good job with her character design, carrying through the core concept of what she was supposed to look like into modern technology. There's actually a strange problem with female characters with polygonal graphic design that I'm not quite sure why, but especially with older technology, less complex 3D geometry, it's actually quite difficult to scale a female character's breasts to both be realistically proportional on their body as well as being large enough to know they exist. Here's Scrap Boulevard. I can see why monsters would feel right at home. And the more we pile up, the more they show up. The way the graphic technology works in almost all game design nowadays involves a point of vertices existing in 3D space and then they are joined together by lines and planes, which is where all of the graphical features you see come from. Now, when you're lacking a lot of vertices and lines, what they call a low polygon model, you run into a problem of a significant lack of detail. It also has happens to give a rather sharp edged look, 
which is why uh, Lara Croft in the original Tomb Raider had weird pointy boobs. As the performance of hardware increased, however, you began to see a lot more 3D geometry, more vertices and more lines being used. Oh, so that's what a soldier looks like in action. This was just a warm-up. <laughs> I'll bet. Let's keep at it. This allowed for ever greater and greater detail, small articulate details, and, well, back in the PlayStation 1 or even the PlayStation 2 days, as I said before, it was difficult to produce a female character that had breasts that were uh, visually noticeable as even existing, while not making them overtly large and looking kind of ridiculous. So that's why you see in, say, Final Fantasy VIII, which was given some credit for using more uh, proportional characters with the term, uh, characters like Quistus and Selfie and all that kind of stuff is not being overly top-heavy top heavy, like Tifa was. But if you, like, really pay attention, like, they're not, they're, like, at least Scarlett Johansson level in terms of size. So it's... 3D geometry was limited enough, so limited that they couldn't really do it properly. And that's not to say that the character uh, Tifa's design was not intended to be overtly sexual. It's pretty obvious that it was. It's just that, okay, you're going to make her a top-heavy character. You're good at this. Charging in like it was nothing. You too. It's a little surprising. Well, I've been here five years now. If you don't look out for yourself, no one else will. By the way, that one's gonna be on the test. This a lesson? <laughs> Gotta learn if you're gonna stick around. Okay, let's wrap this up. In order to achieve that character design, they had to blow her breasts up to uh, balloon-sized proportions. In this, it's not as necessary, but they had to sort of stick with the character design. All right, I think that might be the last of them. You won't stay gone for long. Of course not. Even so, folks will be grateful for the peace and quiet in the meantime. A win's a win, you know? True. Trust me, it'll do wonders for your rep. Right, let's go check in with Biggs and Wedge. I'm guessing there is a whole hell of a lot of work for Cloud to be doing in the Sector 7 slums that he's willing to stick around for some period of time. Now, he does have some kind of an attachment to Tifa there, and she might be part of his motivation as to why he wants to stay behind. But he comes across like somebody who's a, kind of a drifter, someone who's moving from place to place. Now, I said it before, and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it in probably every episode just to make sure that I'm not catching anybody by surprise. But I'm playing through this game with some understanding of what happens in the original game, and I'm going to assume any real fan of this, or at least somebody who's going to be watching the video, has played through the original game as well. So I'm not really spoiling too much when I refer to, say, what happens after the second bombing mission or anything like that. So I will be making some comments. Spoilers, if you're back already. Got every last one, too. Now the slum should be safe. You guys are machines! Good job. Meanwhile, we told everyone we could about you. So I heard. I've gotta ask, though. What did you tell them? It's alright. All you gotta do is keep up the good work. It'll pay off soon enough, I promise. How's the sword, by the way? Good. Glad to hear it. Seems like the perfect fit for you. Yeah. We've been through a lot. Oh, you okay? I'm fine. Been meaning to ask. After you left the village... It's a long story. I've got time. Why don't you tell me all about it while we try to wrestle up some more work for you? That sounds great! I'll come too! Oh, uh, no, you won't. What? Come along now, you two. Sorry, Go on. maybe uh. next time. Huh? No fair! Uh, think about it for a second. They haven't seen each other in years. You'd be a third wheel. <sighs> hey, before we get back to it, why don't you check out the weapons? No need. 
Come on, the dealers probably heard all about you by now. Might treat you better. I don't know about that. Damn it, Wedge. Take the frickin' hint. Hold up. Heard there's a merc that'll take on any monster. You the man? Word spreads fast around here. What if I am? Sorry about before. I get antsy when business is slow. <sighs> man in your line of work needs weapons, no? Why not try that one on for size? Yours on the house. Badass like you rocking my weapons is good advertising. Think about it. Fine. Or if you want to take a look at something else. Just a look. Don't be a stranger. Since you've got yourself a new weapon, let's see if we can't put it to good use. Come on. Let's go chat up Weimer. Who? The guy who tracks all the requests that come to the watch. You never know. Could toss some work your way. Where's he at? Oh, he should be back at the office by now. What do you know? I already got a new weapon. Okay, speaking of spoilers, I'm going to uh, fill you in on a little bit of a fan, fan theory I have. I'm not sure how many other people think this as well, but it was something I expressed in my LP of the original Final Fantasy VII. And it has to do with Cloud and his relationship with Tifa and all that kind of stuff. Now, some of this isn't really a fan theory so much as it is a straight-up fact about the game. Cloud and Tifa, when they were kids, weren't friends. Really, her attraction to him or her memory of him or anything like that is really colored by that one conversation they had on the well back when they were kids before Cloud left to head to Midgar. And that, as far as she can tell, was the last time that she had seen him, and that was, I don't know, seven years ago or something like that. So there is some confusion between the two of them when he states that they haven't seen each other in five years. And she's like, five years? It's like, it's been longer than that. Although she didn't say that, but she did have some confusion there. A little bit later, she goes and says something similar, though. So they kind of fucked that up. Or she's just playing along. But kind of the fan theory I have has to do with the way Cloud presents himself. Now, we'll eventually find out, not even in this game likely, that Cloud's personality is just a kind of a construct, that he is modeling himself after the behavior of another soldier named Zack. And Zack is, was everything that Cloud wanted to be. Oh, hey there, Tifa. You need a helping hand? Actually, I wanted to introduce you to an old friend of mine. This is Cloud. He's a merc. Ah, uh, you don't say. Well, we're always on the lookout for experienced fighters to help us deal with the bigger critters. I'll take on anything. For the right price, that is. Experienced and cocky, huh? If it's a challenge you want, I might have a few good ones. Your clients can fill you in on the details. Prove yourself at these jobs, and I'll see if I can't find you some more. Thanks. Candidate detected. Performing physical analysis. Sizable weapon. Excellent cardiovascular health and impressive lung capacity. Perfectly balanced muscle and bone structure. An optimal candidate. My name is Chadley. I'm an intern for Shinra's Research and Development Division. I hope you'll be interested in helping me with my research. Please accept this as a down payment. I would like you to set that assessed materia in your equipment and use it to gather intelligence in battle. This data will help me to develop new types of materia. I'm not interested in working for Shinra. You should know that I work actively to undermine Shinra's efforts. I'm sure you of all people can appreciate the tremendous power of materia, as well as how it might be wielded against your corporate enemies. And if you later decide that I am not worthy of your trust, you can do what you do best. I will hold you to that. Excellent! Then we shall work together so long as you deem fit. Once you've completed your task, please return and report to me. Again, spoilers, but based on the experiments that were done on Cloud a few years earlier, he is kind of a void when it comes to his own mental state. He doesn't really have a personality of his own. And I always felt like 
that his actions and the way he acted was based around the people he was speaking to or what he expected they expected of him. So he talks to Barrett. He's an arrogant asshole. He talks to Jesse. He's a little bit less of an asshole, but he's extremely self-confident, and that's something that she wants to see out of him. He talks to Tifa. He's a little bit more affectionate, and, well, his personality is different also when he's talking to Aerith. So when he's in a conversation with Tifa, he has this kind of thing going on in his head subconsciously that, okay, I need to act like this tough guy who doesn't seem like he cares, but he kind of does. And I don't want to stick around, but I do. And all that kind of stuff. And he's really like waffling on all of his emotions here. Oh, hey there. Uh... Is Marlene with you? No. Oh, okay. I was kinda hoping she could help me find my friends. I know someone who can help you. This guy right here. Really? Okay, let me tell you all about them. They have long arms and legs, and they're a little skinny. They like places where there's food. And nice people will give them treats when they ask. And small spaces. Oh yeah, and they're all cats. I'm looking for cats. They're friendly, so if you call them, they'll come running. All three of them. By my friends, please. So that might be a little bit of an explanation as to why they have this kind of um, awkward relationship with each other. Where it's pretty obvious that Tifa is attracted to him and she wants him to stick around and all that kind of stuff. But she's unable to sort of put into words what she wants out of him or her feelings for him or anything like that. And him, in turn, is sort of doing the same thing back to her. It's kind of an unfortunate thing between the two of them that they got going on between the two of them, but there it is. Hey there, Tifa! Welcome back! And you, the new Merc in town looking for work, right? Yeah. In that case, maybe you could do something about the Doom Rats? Them and their were-rat buddies have been tearing up town, looking for food and whatnot. Got into the store and made one hell of a mess, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, you think that's funny, do you? Don't lie. I saw you crack a smile. Well, do the job and you can laugh it up for all I care. Anyway, they're probably nesting in the outskirts. Now I've heard a were-rat in pain will call its friends for help. And the whole rat pack will come running just like that. Now, of course, provided my little fan theory isn't actually true and his personality isn't evolving based on who he's speaking to, it's possible that the developers of this game simply didn't carry that through into this, either because it wasn't actually true or the developers didn't have the same perspective of the story or decided to change things or something like that. Again, spoilers, it's also possible that them, what the hell is she doing? <laughs> the <laughs> a shat in the roll. I lost my train of thought. I got your number. That she, uh, following through a line from the original story, that she doesn't actually believe that this is even Cloud. And she just wants him to stick around to try to figure out what happened. Like, who this guy is, why he's pretending to be Cloud. She does make a note that he looks a little bit different. But overall, like, he's clearly the same person. But... I don't see any doom rats around. Hmm. What do you think? Should we wait? You know, this might be a waste of time. Let's head back to the store and touch base for now. Cloud's personality is different than she remembers. Now, of course... She doesn't really remember Cloud's personality objectively because, again, they weren't actually friends when they were kids. And a number of years have passed. It's been like seven years or so since she remembers seeing him. Person's personality changes between the ages of 14 and 21, I think. Well, rats too much to handle? I'm just messing with you. Heard you took out some were-rats, which is nice and all, but the job was to wipe up the doom-rats. 
No big. Get back out there and finish the job, and we're good. Don't look so glum. It's only a matter of time till they show. You'll get them this time for sure. So she looks at this guy she's talking to and traveling with and thinks, this might be Cloud, but this might not also be Cloud. And she wants to stick around with him, keep him around until she can figure it out. Maybe she figures, like, this is actually him and she just needs to figure that out. Or if she finds out what this guy's story is, she finds out what actually happened to her Cloud or something like that. I'm not entirely sure what her motivation is here. Judging by my perspective, it's really just that she never really understood Cloud's personality to begin with. Even if he is different than he used to be because he's only pretending to be who he is, she never really knew him. Now, it's I'm not entirely sure why more people haven't caught on to this. Maybe some everybody just wasn't really paying attention to the line as it's spoken, or in text or whatever, because there was no speech in that game. In the original game, it's actually revealed through expositional dialogue that Cloud and Tifa weren't friends. It happens fairly late in the game during the sequence in which Cloud and Tifa are trapped in Cloud's mind. And they're reliving the memories in his head. And she's identifying a bunch of them as being like, this isn't real. Like, Cloud, this didn't happen. You gotta, you gotta get back to reality. This isn't how it happened. And you have to go from the perspective like, okay, Tifa was actually there and her memory isn't distorted the way Cloud is. So when she says something happened different than it, what he remembers, you'd have to think like, okay, she's the one that's right. But when they dive back further, back to when they were kids, Cloud has a re revelation for her that she didn't see coming. And she says, like, no, we weren't friends. Like, I tried to get your attention all the time, but you ignored me. She had her own group of friends, and Cloud wasn't a part of that. No, he wanted to be. He tried to get her attention all the time, but it didn't work out for him. And I don't think it was really until that conversation they had on the water tower that her opinion of him changed, where she... They're, like, 14 or something like that, and they're stupid kids. And she sort of distorted the conversation they had into being this really overt romantic gesture that was like the most romantic thing that's ever happened in her life. And it is that memory that has fed her delusion on who this Cloud was when she was a kid. So it wasn't really just Cloud that was lying to himself, it was Tifa as well. So it's no surprise that this man that shows up all these years later isn't exactly what she suspected. Not only have things changed, but Cloud was never the person she thought he was to begin with. Finally managed to get those doom rats, huh? Thanks, guys. You're the greatest. I was so dead in here, I thought I might have to close up shop for good. Hey, got an idea. Hear me out. If the guy who took care of the town's rat problem told everybody where he liked to shop, well... What do you say? I'll make it worth your while, of course. Give you some incentive. Talk you up to Weimer and my customers, and anybody else who listen. You'll be swimming in work before you know it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, then. That's what I like to hear. Seventh Heaven, the new Merc in town in my little store. I can see it now. We're gonna clean up. That went well. Could be you found your calling. Yeah. It was all right, I guess. Think of each job as an opportunity. Not to make money, but to build connections. It's not what you know, but who. <laughs> you remembered. Not a patient teacher. <laughs> Maybe not so patient next time. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, Barrett should have finished collecting his share of the money by now. So what do you want to do? Head back to the bar? Now I get that Cloud wants to establish himself here, and the neighborhood watch thing doesn't pay, but these other jobs, like, he gets something out of it. What the hell does he get out of finding a kid's lost cats? Everyone's favorite item shop is better than ever! Don't be a stranger, drop on hey! 
Hey, what are you doing in there? Come on out. I'm trying to get a cat to come out. It snatched one of my pastries and scurried in there. Will you be a deer and lend me a hand? Now, I said it in the previous episode, and I'll repeat it here, but I really like the design of the Sector 7 slums, and I'm wondering how the rest of the game is going to end up looking like. Now, I've played deeper into this game, but I haven't played so deep that I have reached the point of the second reactor bombing mission. So I haven't gotten that far. So just to give you a kind of a perspective on how much of this game I've seen and how much of my comments are coming out of true ignorance or me just being a dumbass. But this, uh, I wonder what the rest of the game is going to end up looking like. Because, I mean, there are some lazy te uh, textures or something like that. And the fact that Cloud can't hop over anything is a little bit irritating. But the environment design, I think, looks pretty damn good. And the it's not an open world game, but it's giving me sort of little bits of taste of what an open world-ish kind of thing is. Because you have this hub world here that you're going about and you're picking up all these side quests that you can go and do between the major story parts of the game. And now, of course, um, a lot of the Final Fantasy games have had side quests where you go and you do something that you don't really have to do. In the original seven, it was things like getting Yuffie or Vincent to, or the dress in Walmart or anything like that where you can go above and beyond with that. But there weren't this these overt bunch of side quests that you have the option to do. Now, I feel like there's some not strict necessity of doing these. But I'll be locking myself out of something if I don't perform these side quests. So I'm going to do all of them. I'm not necessarily going to have all of them on video, though. Cloud! You were the first to gather the data I requested. Here is the rest of your payment. I have developed new materia. Would you like to see it? I don't know how the hell Chadley is supposed to be, but he seems a little bit robotic to me. And he kind of looks like Hope from 13, but he's dressed like Sherry Birkin from Resident Evil 2. Uh, it's, uh, it's weird. He, kinda, he has a little bit of a robotic personality, especially when we first met him. He's speaking a little bit more like a normal person now. But I do his stupid little quests or side quests or activities during combat or whatever, and then he sells me materia. So, I plan okay. to develop more materia in the future. Together, we can harness enough power to take down Shinra. I'll keep repairing more battle intel reports, which I hope you will assist me in completing. A certain shopkeeper told me you paid him a visit. Thanks for helping him out. Just so happens there's another job I'd like to offer you. Now that I know you can handle yourself in a fight, you got a real killer on the loose, you see. A rabid catch dog. Maybe you've heard people talking about it. Shinra Muck gone feral. Last sighting was in Scrap Boulevard. Think you're up to it? I'll handle it. You're a lifesaver. Doubt anyone else around here stands a chance. Go get him, bud. Is there anyone who can chase off that same rabid dog as well? Seamless transitions between environments can have a bit of a downside here. This is, what, the second time that we stumbled up onto Strap Boulevard, or is this the third? I don't know, I can't even remember now. But we're running back into this one area here, and although a seamless transitions between environments is less jarring for the player, it does kind of give me this weird perspective that, okay, you have this area here which isn't really all that far away from where everybody is living Keep your cool. now i get that there are monsters that patrol around in this area that wander in here and then the neighborhood watch goes and has to deal with those but that doesn't seem like a particularly uh, good excuse as to why this area isn't really developed i mean there are shanty walls or everything set up so maybe people have tried and it just never worked out but it seems kind of weird that you have this 
dense shanty town. And then right over here, there's all this undeveloped land. But, like, okay, there are monsters here. Well, we're not far away from the town. So, why are... Why are the monsters here, but not in the town? Okay, so you put up a fence, and the neighborhood watcher keeping the monsters from crossing the fence. We'll move the fence 60 feet that way, and then guard that position. I don't know, it's... It's a lot of... There are a lot of pipes around here, too, so I don't know what this place is supposed to be. But anyway, seamless open environment. If we had hit a loading screen, it would at least give the player some sort of uh, perception that perhaps the area you were heading to was a little bit further away than I ran for a minute in this direction and now I'm where no one can live. <laughs> it's a little, it's, it's a beefy dog right there. It is a little bit of an irritation, I think, with modern game design that everybody feels the need to go push things into an open world kind of thing. Okay, so yeah, uh, the Elder Scrolls series sort of upended the RPG genre, uh, what was it, 15 years ago or so, when they released Oblivion, it was an open world game, and then suddenly everybody was expecting every game to be open world. But I don't really think that that was necessary. They didn't have to go that far, especially with all the RPGs. I drove the hound into the area up ahead. So make sure you're ready. You started to see it go and, well, let's say, affect the game design of lots of other things, like the Uncharted Keep series, cool. Uncharted 1, 2, and 3, were pretty linear in terms of the way you progress through the game. Then Uncharted 4 comes out, and it is also still a rather linear game, but they put these large environments in it that give you a kind of perspective perception, a false one, but a perception of being an open world. And I don't really feel that that was kind of necessary. It does make the world feel larger, but it can be oftentimes at the expense of other aspects of design. Now in this, okay, they slowed the story down and they had to slow the story down because they needed to make a few hours of gameplay turn into 40 hours. So every section that we went into was going to have a lot of extra content added to it. And I wonder how much of those 40 hours are expected to be a person doing optional side quests. So they they got this... How do, how do you go and add that extra content? How do you add those extra side quests? Well, you make Sector 7 slums 10 times larger. You had a, add a bunch of NPCs that you don't necessarily need to talk to, but some of them are going to have the side quests, so you can go and spend a couple of hours stumbling around doing all these extra jobs or something like that. All right, so the that's the approach they use here, and... I, it's, I don't know, I, I've only been through this Sector 7, I haven't been to Sector 5 yet, or I haven't been to Wall Market yet, and anything like that, so I don't really know how it's going to turn out, but it, it seems alright here. Some of these quests are, it really only took this long. They seem a bit long, No, of course it took this long. This episode was originally going to be an hour and a half before I cut a lot of the footage out. I'm still not even sure at this point how long this one's going to be. But it took me an hour and a half of getting through all of this just to advance to the next part of the game. And I played through it again because I... Maybe perhaps you have noticed that I fucked up <laughs> and I loaded into a guest account on my PS4 so all of my saves didn't didn't take. <laughs> so I had to replay again from the the Mako reactor onward. So I had to replay all of these sections. And the second time I went through it, the game went through much quicker. That hour and a half to do all those quests turned into maybe like 30 minutes. Of course, I was also skipping all the cutscenes and jumping through all of the dialogue scenes and all of that. But an hour and a half to a half an hour... Of course, getting through it faster is because I did it before, and the first time you go through, you're not going to know what to do. So it does take a long time. Took care of the dog, did you? Phew, we owe you one. 
Gotta say, I've never seen a Shinra breed like that before. Out of curiosity, when exactly did it show up? Oh, today. The first reports came in just this morning. Uh, why do you ask? Wait a minute. There's this crazy story about a Shinra research lab hidden right beneath our feet under the slums. Huh. Really? That's news to me. <laughs> and here I thought you might know something I don't. Well, I guess not. It's a big organization. I'm sure there's lots of secrets I don't know. Yeah, fair enough. You got the bastard. That's good enough for me. I'll go ahead and put the word out that you're looking for more work. Getting to the point that I've been circling the drain on for the past couple of minutes. I don't know how it's going to end up working out in this game if this side quest rotation of you go into a town and then you spend an hour and a half or two hours or whatever doing all of these other side quests is going to get old or not. At the moment, even playing through it the second time, it hasn't worn on me yet. But I can imagine that is something that is going to potentially stifle my repeated playthroughs. Okay, so I did this twice. The third time I play through this, am I going to enjoy it? Maybe not. I mean, the original Final Fantasy game, I'm not sure anymore how many times I played through it. I may have made a comment about that in my other LP, but I can say maybe four or five times I've played that game from beginning to end. Enough times that I have a pretty good recollection of the way how it goes through. Now, of course, it's not a lot. Like, say, the original Resident Evil I played maybe like 12 to 15 times all the way through. But it's a difference between a game that lasts four hours and a game that lasts 40 hours. My god, the textures on the ground are terrible. I know you're not meant to see up that close, but they showed me up that close. <laughs> All right, let's speed some things along here. We want to get through this stupid kid quest thing and move on. Stay away from me! Hold it! Settle down now. Get off me, assholes! I didn't do shit! Shut up, punk! Or what, huh? Screw you! Ow, What's going on? on? Somebody like went that? and stole some blast data from a you. Shinra warehouse. <laughs> so public security started asking questions, and you know how Johnny gets. It's because of the reactor bombing, I bet. I could be wrong, but something tells me they're not going to settle for just roughing him up this time. We've got to save him, Cloud. Is he Avalanche? No. He doesn't really know what we do. But he has his suspicions. And... He's a talker. Actually, you know what? Maybe I should go alone. I'm coming. Uh, are you sure? It's the least I can do. Lead on. <sighs> Thanks. Come on. It's Johnny, a character that I can't say I really have much of an understanding of at all, even from the original game. Probably because of some sort of a translation error with the description of his character. Johnny was a repeating, repeatedly reoccurring character in the original game. He appeared in the Sector 7 slums, and I think his final appearance was in, like, Costa del Sol or something. citizens don't steal blasting, Agent. So why don't you tell me why your ID popped when we were going over the warehouse logs? Huh? You've got it all wrong. I've never gone anywhere near a Shinra warehouse. Uh, my ID. <laughs> your ID was never lost, dumbass. You've never gotten you inside a Shinra installation in the first place. I swear, all he had to do was keep his mouth shut. Yep. Anyway, you distract the officers and I'll figure something out.
Let him go. Hmm? Who are you? The cavalry? Huh? Is that... is that who I think it is? Oh, hell yeah! You guys really came to save me! Out on level! <laughs> hey! What the hell do you think you're doing? Here we go. Johnny's only significance in the story was as an old friend of Tifa's. Now, I think perhaps it was a translation error, but it was stated that he was from Nibelheim, which was the hometown of Tifa and Cloud. Strangely enough, he doesn't remember Cloud. I mean, he he talks to Cloud a little bit, but he they don't have any conversation. Cloud doesn't ever reference him or anything like that. And I think there was some kind of a translation error that, yeah, he's known Tifa for the five years or so since she's been in Midgar, but he wasn't, um, he wasn't from Nibelheim. He was just some jackass that kept reappearing in the game. Is it over? Yo! Anybody there? If you're there, then help me! What now? He's a talker. Huh? Whoa, whoa! No! Uh, you're not gonna... Hold up! Wait! Don't, don't do it, man! You wanna live? Then get the hell out of town. You, you got it, boss! You ain't never gonna see my face again! I swear! Are you sure about this? It's a big risk. I know, but... It's fine. And them? No more. Cloud, you're scaring me. <laughs> they did allow to add a little bit of, to his story here, that perhaps he's involved with Avalanche in some way, or at least he was a patsy, or he supplied the explosives for the reactor bombing. I... I'm worried about Johnny. I'm more worried about us. We gotta go, right? Right. What? It's just... You've really changed. How? I suppose it's... Yeah. Your eyes. They used to be less... It's the Mako. Soldier, remember? I remember. So, what do you want to do now? Head back to the bar, or do you want to tackle another job or two? All of the members of Avalanche seem to have some sort of um, common motivation for joining. Now, they all say that we're doing this for the good of the planet. Destroying the reactors it will save the planet. But oftentimes, it seems like that's just a sort of a cover. It's usually about revenge. That's the strongest motivation of all, isn't it? With at least Barrett and Tifa and, and all that, we, we know that they have been wronged in some way. And they're striking out at the entity, which is Shinra, which has wronged them. But still, Tifa seems to not really be cut out for this. Though she's certainly capable of defending herself and fighting and all that kind of stuff, she doesn't have the heart of a terrorist. She's not the violent person that she kind of needs to be in order to be a terrorist, and she is not as ruthless as she needs to be. Johnny was a security risk, and Cloud was probably going to end up killing him because he has a bit more of a pragmatic self about him for trying to be a soldier and all of that. And... He probably would have killed the guards too, but Tifa's like, no, 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 don't. There's enough killing. Like, don't, don't do any of that. Hello, hello. Oh, what do we have here? I'm guessing you're that merc I've heard so much about. You're not here to shop, are you? People were right. You look like you can handle yourself. So some drakes have made themselves at home in the abandoned Talager factory. Can't have that kind of trouble around here. My regulars will do anything to get their hands on the scrap in there, and if they run into those drakes, they could get hurt. I'll handle it. Much obliged, sir. Head on over to the old Talager factory and talk to Narjan. He's the watchman guarding the entrance. Good luck. I'm counting on you, my friend.
So how does Tifa go along with the whole bombing runs and all that kind of stuff? Perhaps the other members of Avalanche had convinced her that perhaps nobody was going to end up getting hurt. Or perhaps before the bomb went off, she didn't really think about it too much, or she was capable of distancing herself from the thought of exploding a bomb in a power plant. Now, had the mission gone off as planned, perhaps a couple of guards would have died, and the reactor would have exploded, but it wouldn't have been this catastrophic thing. The bomb that went off, though, boomed the fuck out of that place and caused a lot of collateral damage, and a lot of people were injured, and a lot of people died. So, that's got to have some pretty significant effect on a person who didn't really want to get involved in this kind of thing to begin with. It's almost like joining a cult. A lot of the people who end up joining some of the crazier cults or some other kind of kind of fucked up organization start it start doing it for some very reasonable reason or something like that. It makes sense that everybody wants to get revenge on Shinra. Shinra has wronged them and Shinra actually is pretty damn evil. So a group of people opting in a, operating in opposition to Shinra makes perfect sense. Perhaps uh, Avalanche is going a bit far with it, but it's easy to get started. And for a bunch of people that believe that they are in the right, That's it's easy way. to justify going and doing a lot of bad stuff. Now Tifa, I don't know how long she's actually been a member of Avalanche, but I'm guessing the attack, the bombing run, that they did on the Sector 1 reactor was at least this cell of Avalanche. This was their first real mission that they've ever done. And there are some comments made by the other members that their larger um, Avalanche organization or whatever the hell it is, terrorist network, has excommunicated this cell out for being extremists. So perhaps I, I don't have much perspective on the rest of Avalanche. They may be more or less crazy than this group. I guess the rest of Avalanche, if bombing a reactor was as easy as it was made out to be here, Avalanche would be doing it all the fucking time. So I'm not sure where the, uh, where the rest of them stand on this. But I'm going to lay the blame really on Barrett for this. Barrett seems like the craziest of them all. He is a crazy aggressive guy. And he, in, at least in this version of the game, seems to have the kind of personality that other people are attracted to. He does his best to push Cloud away, but when everybody's, after the whole bombing mission is run, he stands in front of them and he gives them the kind of motivational speech that they needed to keep going. So, is Barrett a cult leader in this? <laughs> Where he's a, he's definitely a terrorist leader. I mean, he wears that, he wears that distinction on his sleeve. But, but perhaps this version of him is a tad more subdued than the original, the original incarnation of Barrett in the original game. Now, a lot of that makes sense. I mean, the original Barrett was just sort of a, a personification of Mr. T. They based his character seemingly very much on Mr. T. And he was this loud, obnoxious, not particularly intelligent guy who, although he was leading Avalanche, wasn't really the leader. Wasn't really a good leader. Apparently he can't break those. But that version of Barrett very much intended to explode the reactor the way that it went boom. And all of the collateral damage that happened, not only did he own, he bragged about. The next one is going to be even bigger. I believe that's an exact quote referencing the next bombing mission that they were going to go on. He blew that reactor up. He intended to blow that reactor up and damn the consequences to anybody else who got caught. Collateral damage didn't mean anything to him. Perhaps it was just that he was able to separate his emotions of wanting to uh, punch Shinra in the eye from the understanding that he was going to be punishing a lot of innocent people and he was going to sort of become the kind of thing that he probably should have been hating. But the Barrett in the original game was very much more aggressive than this one. 
Now this one goes and he organizes a bombing run, but when that place goes boom, he doesn't break down emotionally or anything like that, but he at least looks at Jesse and goes, like, you overdid it a bit, didn't you? Jesse definitely didn't want the massive explosion to happen. She... I'm lost here. She went and very much regrets what happened there, and very much believes that she was responsible. You tell me I can't cut through some yellow tape? Look at the size of that sword. Holy shit. Can't get through a fence. Jesse believes that she is responsible, and I guess lacking any of her other evidence to the contrary, she has a at least a reason to believe that. So she's starting to doubt herself, but even though that bomb exploded the way it did, and Barrett didn't intend it to, he is still so gung-ho about continuing the mission. Perhaps he feels like the greater good of the planet is more important than any individual person who is going to be harmed by their actions. But I think more of his... He's not really motivated by the, by the well goodwill of the planet, or the health of the planet. He's motivated by revenge, just like everyone else is. And perhaps that's just a much stronger emotion for him. Like, I want to I wanna punish Shinra, and if somebody else gets hurt, then, then oh well. He doesn't go out of his way to hurt people, but he's also not really going to cry about it if anybody else gets hurt. Also, maybe there's a possibility that he feels like he needs to do what they have to do, and he does have regret for the death of all those people, and the injury and the destruction in Sector 8 or 1 or wherever the hell we were. But since he is the leader of Avalanche, he can't be seen as having this sort of emotional breakdown over it. So he's he's being the strong one, in a sense. He is not... Why do you even have a roof? It's clearly never going to rain. <laughs> There's a hole in it, so I guess nobody really bothered. <laughs> He can't be seen as breaking down because he's sort of like the emotional strength of the center of Avalanche. And if he stopped, if he broke down, if he walked away from the entire thing, perhaps Avalanche would fall apart. I can't imagine Biggs Wedger Jesse taking over the leadership role, and Tifa really doesn't even want to be there. Cloud eventually will take lead, but he's... Like, Barrett doesn't trust him right now, and Cloud has no intentions of sticking around with this group of terrorists anyway. So maybe it's just he thinks Avalanche needs to continue, and needs to continue doing what it's doing, and even if he's affected by like that, okay? what they've done, he can't let it show. Okay then, that's another solid gig in the books. You know, the whole town is really impressed with what you've done. Keep it up, and you'll have enough work to keep you fed for a lifetime. All thanks to you. And don't you forget it. So where do we get paid? The shop or something? Yeah, but why don't we head back to the apartments first? Take a quick breather. Which lesson was that again? Lesson one. Got it? Anyway, let's go. I know I said I liked the design of the slums before, and I still do, but I have to say that they did kind of go contrary to my expectations with something. I had always envisioned the slums of Midgar to have this kind of perpetual daytime going on. The sun didn't reach the ground level because the plate was in the way, but they put lights along the bottom end in order to shine down, so it, was, it always seemed like it was kind of like a brightly lit parking lot. But anyway, I skipped over an entire mission and the turn in of the last one because it was just taking too damn long. Huh? Someone's back awful early. Not that I mind. Would you two be dears and swap your filters out for me? I left them in your rooms. Sure thing. Not so fast, you. Do me a favor. She needs a friend. A real friend. Huh. We're already friends. So when she talks, are you really listening? Thinking about her and her feelings? 
Or are you just going through the motions? Go on. Let's take care of this real quick, okay? Sure. Come over when you're done. Marl is another character that was added to this. I don't know where the hell Tifa was supposed to be living in the original game. I s figured she was just living in a back room in, in Seventh Heaven or something like that. But she has an apartment here, and they had a landlord for her. Landlady. And she's a new character. And she seems to be rather protective of Tifa. Now, she's aware of the, all the Avalanche's doings and all that kind of stuff. So, I don't know where she stands morally. But she's described as sort of like being Tifa's, like a surrogate mother. I guess when Tifa arrived in Midgar, she was 15. And somebody needed to take care of her when she arrived. Give me one sec. I'll be done in a bit. Oh, finally. <sighs> so, after you left the village... Hmm? I let you off the hook before, back at the hall, but not this time. Uh, uh. Hmm? Well, when we were kids... Everybody wanted to be a soldier, right? Yeah, I remember they were on the news every day during the war. Thing is, by the time I finally made it in, they didn't need heroes anymore. It was nothing like what we dreamt of. It was just working for Shinra. Just... I'm sorry. I know it's a touchy subject. Oh. Not exactly small talk. Especially with someone you haven't seen in a while. I get it. Still, it's kind of funny. Us going our separate ways, thinking that must be it. That we'd never meet again. And then here, of all places, we do. You know what? We should totally celebrate. Let's dress up and hit the town. Really? I mean, why not? It'll be fun. Do you even have fancy clothes? Not like fancy fancy, but I'll figure something out. What do you think would suit me, huh? Something exotic? Uh, really? Then again, if we're making an effort... Be sure to pick an outfit that goes with mine, okay? Will do. <laughs> this is gonna be so much fun. You'll see. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> and on that happy note, I think it's time we head back to the bar. Come on. Uh, you don't need a break? Honestly, I'm feeling pretty good. Marl isn't always right, you know. Apparently the only way that I was going to see that scene was if I did all the side missions, so I guess it's a good thing I did them. I heard you're having second thoughts. I know we have to think big if we're going to make a difference, but not like this. <laughs> <laughs> 